Here is the difference between two cars. The one on the left gets the job done, but it feels flat, lifeless. On the right, same setup, but with Feelcraft, my Unity tool for adding quick, punchy game feel. Just a few minutes, a couple lines of code, and everything feels way more alive. Now, if you're wondering how to build this kind of car controller from scratch, stick around. I will walk you through it step by step. And yeah, I will show exactly where and how Feelcraft fits in, if you want to level it up. First, a quick look at the 1.1 update I just pushed out. I noticed some performance issue when starting up scene with a lot of particle. So now particle can be pre-instantiated way smoother. The tool was also missing a proper way to hold a fill. Like when a car turns and you want the effect to stick, you know? So I added a new loop mode hold for that. And to cleanly stop specific effect whenever you need, I rework the API. Now you can deactivate variant by name or by ID. And activate variant give you back a unique ID to track them. You can even scale the intensity with a new power parameter that can be positive or negative. Overall, 1.1 adds more control, better performances, and still keep things quick to use. All right, let's start with the force class. I'm not using built-in physics here. I want something simpler and way more predictable. This class just applies a force that fades out over time. Super useful for stuff like car impacts, engine thrust, or wheel rotation. Basically, whenever something needs a bit of momentum without the full physics overhead, I use this. It keeps things snappy and easy to control, especially when you're going for feel over realism. It takes a few things when you set it up. First, a type, either translate or rotate, the transform you want to affect, a power value for how strong the force is, a resistance value that gradually slow it down over time, a direction to know which way it's pushing or spinning, and an option to suspend resistance for one frame. That's useful when the engine actively accelerating. Then there is the refresh method, which is called every frame. It applies the force, either translation or rotation. And then if resistance isn't suspended, it reduces the power accordingly. It also works with both positive and negative power, so you can easily go forward, backward, spin left or right. Now the car class. First up, it has a set of uncollate actions. Other objects, like the camera, can subscribe to this to react to collisions. So if you want to trigger things like camera shakes on impact, this is where that happens. Then I've got a list of colliders. I'm using four box colliders to detect which side of the car got hit. You could totally simplify that with just one and do some math, but I like the direct approach. Next, we've got our forces. One for the engine, one for the wheel, and a list of external forces. I kept the engine and wheel separate because we will control them based on player input. There is also a simple is driving flag that I use to toggle between idle and driving animation. Of course, we've got a reference to the fill component from my tool, Fillcraft, plus the ID references for the active rotation fill. That way, I can stop or restart it cleanly whenever I need. In the awake function, I do all the setup. I grab the fill component and initialize the engine and wheel forces. In update function, I like to keep things super clean. So I split it into sub function. That way, the update loop kind of reads like a little story, you know? 
Then we have the onCollisionEnter function. That's where collision events come in from the cars box collider. The update wheels function check if the wheel force is strong enough to trigger a rotation field. If it is, we activate it. If not, we stop it. Then it runs the wheel force logic for this frame. The update engine function works pretty much the same way, but handles idle versus driving. It also updates the direction of the engine force in case the car rotated. Finally, we loop through all external forces. If any of them have a power of zero, we just remove it. Clean and simple. Now let's talk about the context class. This one handle player's input and link it to the car behavior. We've got references to the core, camera, and a bunch of tweakable variables to fine-tune all the driving feel, like acceleration strength, steering response, that kind of stuff. In a wake function, I subscribe to the car's on-collide event. When the car gets hit, I react by modifying the engine forces to absorb some of the impact. Then. I apply a new external force that pushes it slightly in the opposite direction of the hit. Of course, I trigger the Fieldcraft variant for impact that shake both the car and the camera. Each collider has its own reaction setup, so I can tweak all front, back or side collision feel differently. Then in the update function, we handle player's input. If the player not pressing up, I make sure to deactivate the acceleration game field. If they pressing up, but the car is already moving forward, I treat it like a brake. Otherwise, it's an acceleration, so I activate the acceleration field if it's not already active, suspend the engine resistance for one frame, boost the engine power and cap it between min and max value. I do the same kind of checks for down, left and right inputs, updating forces and triggering the right game feel to match. It gives a nice responsive feel while still being super tweakable. This is how it looks in the editor. You can see the car with its collider. I've got one uh, on each side and uh, over here this is the set of game field variants i created for the car using my tool and you can see there is some states like idle or drive and there is also some specific game field events uh, i can also click on the camera and you will see the variants for the camera and that's it Everything you've seen here, the car setup, the forces, the game field reaction, it took just about 30 minutes to put together. Of course, Fieldcraft isn't just for cars. You can use it to add juicy responsive feedback to any object in your game. It's available now on the Unity Asset Store and it's 50% uh, off until June 25. If you pick it up, you will be supporting future updates. I've got plenty more features planned. Links are in the description. Thanks for watching and I can't wait to see what you built with my tool.